Power Auto Media, we rely on a DynoJet chassis dyno to test everything from exhaust installations to supercharger systems and even nitrous. Over the years, we've done hundreds of cars and made literally thousands of pulls. But in that whole time, it occurs to us that we haven't really ever explained what is a chassis dyno and how does it work. We've got a brand new in-ground chassis dyno with a load control on it. We figured it's time we fix that and bring you a little DynoJet 101. Obviously, a chassis dyno seems like a pretty complicated piece of equipment, but at its heart, there's just simple physics, right? I mean, you've got a mass that's being accelerated over time. That's correct. It's simple physics. We know the weight of this drum, and we know how fast you accelerate it over a certain amount of time. That's how we can give you an accurate measured horsepower number. Um, we get torque basically by just connecting an RPM ductive to the engine. We give you engine torque, measured horsepower. There's a little bit of math that is embedded in the WinPEP 7 software, um, and it uses that math every time that you make a horsepower run. So we know the math never changes in the software, but what will change is the vehicle that's on the dyno. So if you accelerate this drum any differently, it's gonna give you an accurate measurement based off of the acceleration rate. Hang on, let's take a look at this. All right, so what is actually being measured by the dyno? Well, what happens at the dynamometer is we measure force, mass times acceleration. Then we need to know distance to calculate how much work is actually being done. But then you have this simple math to get our torque and power members. Horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. But all this is being already done for you in the software and hardware of the dynamometer. So there's no real reason for anybody to have to know this. Yeah, well, let's forget about it. Back to the dyno. It's not just saying, oh, well, my car feels faster, or, yeah, I think I'm making more horsepower with this change I made. You're actually quantifying that change. We are quantifying that change. If you've done anything to the vehicle, we're going to be able to measure it accurately and tell you if it was a good change or a bad change. You know, one of the things we do a lot is we go out to the drag strip, and we'll do before and after testing, too. But it's always a challenge trying to get, like, an air-fuel ratio or collect other data while we're at the drag strip, and that's something that this is really good for. Yeah, a lot of race cars actually have onboard data acquisition systems but you know to know what's happening at that moment in time it's very difficult for the driver to see any of that data and that's where a chassis dyno comes into play they can put the race car on the dyno they can log all the parameters that they need to see um, if it's an obd2 based vehicle see everything going on in the obd2 parameters monitor air fuel through the tailpipe and get engine rpm and even boost off of the vehicle and they can see everything that's happening and they can make sure the vehicle's safe before they even take it to the track all right well enough talk let's see this thing in action all right Testing is actually a safety preventative measure. Um, it actually provides less wear and tear on your car than actually doing street testing. Um, one, due to the fact that you're not actually spinning the tires on asphalt, so it helps reduce tire wear, as well as just overall um, load changes that you can make to the vehicle to test it in different ranges. I've dynoed probably 100 cars. Honestly, I went about, about six weeks to two months without an actual dyno between selling our old dyno to having our new dyno, and it hurt. <laughs> I definitely never realized how much I appreciate it and value a dyno until it was actually taken away from me. And now that I have it back, it's definitely made my life a lot easier in tuning and just overall safety of making sure the vehicles are running right. What are we looking at here? I mean, we've got horsepower and torque, we've got air-fuel ratio, but we've also got some data coming off of the OBD2. Yeah, that's correct, Paul. What you're seeing here is horsepower, torque, air, fuel, and what we also have uh, out of the OBD2 module is what we call equivalence ratio. This is the commanded lambda that the ECM is asking for from the vehicle. This is a great example because, as you can see, this Mustang, it's got a blower on it, and it's making 448 horsepower. Well, in my opinion, that's a little bit low right now, but the reason why it's low is because the ECM is actually asking for a richer air fuel, temp or air fuel ratio. It's doing that for catalyst efficiency. It's trying to protect its cats. So. Our power is actually lower due to the fact that the car asked for a richer air fuel and it actually richened itself up. So, I mean, this is a great example of this is why you need to have a Dynajet Dyno, this is why you need to have all this printed information out of the ECM because a normal tuning shop might see this and they're going to try to tune this out mm -hmm. instead of actually knowing that the ECM is actually asking for this data. And now I'm also seeing that we've got a correction factor going here, the SAE correction factor. That takes into account atmospheric uh, uh, temperature, humidity, what else? You've got temperature, pressure, and humidity that SAE is using, and that's also what we're bringing in from our atmospheric module. Um, you guys being at sea level, we're probably only going to see maybe a 1% correction. You guys are pretty close to perfect conditions. Um, so our, our difference in power might only be 5 horsepower versus some places, if say we were in Colorado, where we're closer to 5,500 feet in elevation, mm -hmm we might be seeing a very significant change in uh, 
in power because of um, your, your elevation is just so high. And those modules come with every Dynojet you're going to get, right? I mean, that embeds in every file as well, too. That's standard, and you can't make a dyno run without using the data. Is it even possible to cheat on a dyno run on a Dynojet dyno like this? Cheating on a dyno is not beneficial for anybody. There's really no way to cheat the dyno. Um, it is what it is when it comes to horsepower measurement. This is our measuring stick. It's 12 inches long. It's not much else you can do about it. The only way you're going to cheat it is if the car itself is changed. No, that's not exactly cheating if the yeah. car is making more power. So if the car is making more power, the car is making more power. If it's making less power, it's making less power. Well, now that we have the eddy current, uh, the load control, it actually allows us to take the car up to any certain RPM that we designate and actually put a set load on it to do uh, multiple tuning and test at that range so that we can really finite tune, like, for instance, a fuel injection fuel bubble how much fuel you want at this RPM under a certain load. What you can do with this dyno versus the dyno that you guys had before is, first off, your first one was a four-wheel drive dyno that was inertia only, a 424X. This one is a 224X LC. This dynamometer has uh, the ability of being an inertia dyno, but it also has a power absorption unit, eddy current brake, that allows you to do load testing. So you can do all your part throttle testing, um, light load stuff in-house instead of having to take the vehicle out on the street to finalize the tunes. Using it in this fashion with an eddy current brake, it's going to be more repeatable and it will be a lot safer that way so you don't have to worry about getting into a wreck or an accident on the street. The availability of chassis dynos has changed the way people do business uh, in, the, in the performance industry. Number one, it makes people honest. There's no more, all right, my parts are going to do this and my tune's going to do that. Now you have to prove it because there's a Dynajet dyno on every corner. Some of the technical partners Dynajet is closely affiliated with would be Power Auto Media, SCT, uh, Roush Yates Engines, Liver Noise Motorsports, and et cetera. They're out there. Um, we have over 6,500 plus dynamometers in the field, so everybody to us is a technical partner. So now you've seen what a Dynajet can do. Do yourself a favor and get down to your local Dynajet equipped tuner and find out your real horsepower and get your tune on. In the meantime, we're going to throw everything with wheels we can on ours.